everyone so this is a late night aha moment to bust a myth a myth that we have always lived with right from the time we were young the myth of perfectionism and this myth lives with us all through our lives in so many different ways in in, in so many forms and creeps in in every area in every nook and corner of our life and grips us so so uh, stickily that many a times we are made to understand this myth called perfectionism as a great uh, as as a great friend as a great virtue as a great god knows whatever but i just felt this today uh, right now while i was brushing my teeth to uh, get to my prayers and uh, before i sleep and my distance healing and meditation and i just was looking at myself and uh, admiring this fact of uh, what would it be to break through this mirror of perfectionism what would it be to not be perfect the way people perceive me to be and there are many a times that has happened and many a times where i would have thought that i am perfect but i have not been and and that's fine that's absolutely fine but what triggered was the efforts the true true efforts that we make all our lives to just just be perfectly framed in this outstanding and magnificent photo frame of other people's perceptions this beautiful antique and glorious and artistic frame of mind that people you know kind of want to thrust us into when i was born i had this extremely curly wiggly woggly hair and there were such lovely lovely locks and curls and uh i ha- i had these locks for uh, a good about of till i was about 3 years old or maybe 4 years old and then suddenly i had this little straightish hair that started happening and the locks started kind of out uh, outgrowing and then again uh when i was about 12 and 13 it uh, got back uh, to the wishy washy wavy hair that was neither curly nor straight and it looked more worse than i could ever think of and i would always always look into the mirror and really really hate my hair uh when i was young my uh, aunt who is my mentor my educator my nurturer and everything along with my parents uh was extremely strict that i shouldn't be having long hair so every time i would really really cry to cut my hair and then uh, she would kind of bribe me with a new bag a new bottle a new dress and say if you cut your hair you're going to get this and just the little you know getting all that attention of life uh, from her the little pampered child uh, that i was with her i would say okay and then she would put me in front of my neighbor who was a wonderful hair stylist and uh, she would make sure that there's no mirror in front of me so that i do not see what's being done to my hair and after the hair got cut i would eventually run into my house and stand in front of the mirror and i would cry the hell out because i would go into this bob cut i would go into this crippling boy cut that i really really so hated and i hated it not because my hair was so short now and uh, it wasn't very girly and it wasn't very fancy i hated it because in all my school dramas or my dance i was made to be a boy because i didn't have long hair and we obviously in those times in school couldn't uh, afford uh, 
buying or renting wigs and things like that for the concert so i would like really hate and miss all the wonderful jewelry and the lovely colorful ghaghras and things like that that would be uh, there in the garba you know the gujarati folk dance and uh, any other uh, dance uh, or uh, play that we did i would be made into this little boy and have suspenders or this shirt or this pants stuck up and folded inside because it's not fitting my size since i was very petite i was extremely small and fragile and i was thinking what the hell like why do i have to go through this why can't i wear all this fancy things and every time even in that my aunt would stress upon being a perfectionist she would stress upon you know being on the dotted line she would stress upon the way in elocution the line is said and the word is said and this is said and all of that is so fantastic because that's made me who i am but at that time that perfection was like daunting that perfection was like overkilling and i was fire fighting most of the time to stand up to that perfection in her eyes and i always and always wanted to be this uh, this first coming child who could never go wrong who who was the best in everything who was like the apple of her eye and who had to stand first and who had to take part in all the activities and who who had to do this and who had to do that i don't regret that at all because more sense has prevailed and one is more wiser in life but what it did to me at that point in time is creating these these patterns of hiding and yet wanting to show up the, these patterns of of uh, how can i get that attention how can i get that attention to be the best how can i get that attention to be the first at all times and that's not possible it is not possible to 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 stand first all the time it is not possible to kind of be there all the time but yet what i felt was happening within me that somehow god's grace was giving me the courage was giving me the courage to stand up there was giving me the courage to be there was giving me the the the, the inner strength that come what may i have to at least try to come first i have to at least you know try to be this best student and be this or be that i was in the eyes of most uh, uh sorry in the eyes most of the times but so many times the wrong reason for being mischievous for being talkative for really doing some funny and uh, hilarious things in class for sleeping out in the maths period because i didn't like maths at all i really really disliked it i just couldn't get the hang of it and i would want to sleep out and i almost manifested this headache that would happen during my maths class realize this at all and time went by and this need for perfection just grew more and more and this uh, this uh, this entire rigidity that things have to just be perfect or not be there has to be this 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 perfect black and white or that's it nothing more and nothing less and that's how i started firefighting my life i started firefighting of uh, uh of trying to be the best and push comes to the push off i i have to do it and i started putting myself in the back seat i started putting myself behind everybody's seeming perception about me i started overdoing i started i started pushing my limits 
not realizing what it was doing to my inner self, what it was doing to my health. And I started doing everything where I had to just conquer. I had seen a lot of financial struggle. I come from a very humble, uh, you know, uh, background where my father has and mother has really, really struggled to give me the best. Give me the best in education, give me the best in everything that I needed. And I realized at a very, very early age that even though if I may not have got everything that I wanted, I had got everything that I needed. And that there was a big difference in the need and the want. And I yet did not realize the need to let the perfection go. Because that was so ingrained, that was so stamped, that was so imprinted in my innermost being that I had to live up to other people's expectations all the time. I had to live up how my friends wanted me to be. I had to live up how my teachers wanted me to be or I had to live up how my aunt wanted me to be. And it went on with the work, it went on for everything. Though I was rebellious, though I fought for many, many things, but this subliminal trait of fighting for perfection and pushing efforts for perfection did not realize that it had moved into a toxic zone of over-perfection, of over-perfectionism, of being an over-perfectionist. And many a times... I then went into the zone of doing 100 things myself. And you know why? And that is the thing that many, many of us face. Many leaders, many bosses, many entrepreneurs face. And that happened with me as well. Where I started taking on and doing 50,000 things myself because I wanted it perfect. Because in the eyes of that other, in the eyes of the boss, in the eyes of this and in the eyes of that, it had to be perfect if it is going out from me. And if I had to delegate and if it is not done perfectly, then I will be jacked. It is my backside on fire if it is not done. And then it is better that I do it rather than getting on this other side of the book with people. And then I started overloading. I started overloading everything onto me. I started overloading and, you know, buying into this other myth of multitasking. No, multitasking is not great. We are fed with this nonsense that multitasking is great. And even if you have to multitask, what is required is clarity and focus to really, you know, push out the wheat from the chaff. And to get to the brass tacks of what really needs to be done when and how much time needs to be given to that. And then you move on to the next. Yes, we more so ever as girls, as women are, are kind of, you know, conditioned with this multitasking thing, which is more kind of, uh, you know, uh, a, a part of uh, like our blueprint you are a woman and you have to multitask because tomorrow you will have to get married and you'll have to work and you'll have to look after your children and you'll have to do this and you'll have to uh, you know uh, your in-laws that you've not lived with you have people coming from a different dynamics a different culture a different upbringing and you have to mix in with them you have to fit in with them and you have to do this and you have to be that and if you're not perfectionist and if you're not a perfectionist in this and that then it will be that your parents didn't teach you anything. Your parents were not good enough. And do you want that to happen? Do you want people and the world to blame your parents? Oh my God, the list is endless. We live with this day in and day out. And what does it do to us? It crushes us. I can't even speak. <laughs> That's okay. Because no, this is th th nothing that is... Planned in its, you know, most perfected moment will ever go as is. And that beautiful old thought, man proposes, God disposes. 
stands true. How much ever perfect that we want to be, there will always be a slip. And the important aspect is to do away with this, to do away with the old conditioning that we are brought up with and stop doing it with our next generation. We have not to heal ourselves for our own selves, but we have to heal ourselves for our next generation so that we do not impart and we do not carry out these patterns and we do not throw out these patterns onto them. Our parents did what they did in their limited awareness in the kind of upbringing and mind conditioning that they had. They did their best for us what they thought was best for us. If they were told otherwise, if they were shown otherwise, I'm sure they would have detoured. I'm sure they would have taken the other way around and wanted the best for the child of what is and what should be. But down the line, with everything changing, we do not want to change our beliefs. We do not want to change out and move out and step out of the dogma that we live with. And perfectionism is a big dogma. None of us are perfect. None of us and nothing in this life is imperfect. Sorry. Nothing in this life is perfect. And it is to live in this imperfection, to, to stutter, to, to stop, to, to, to be wrong and yet go on. And that imperfectionism, to do that in your imperfectionism, is the true perfectionism of humanity, is the true level of vulnerable perfectionism that we can attend. And we can only do that when we open our heart to accept our own nonsense, to accept our own quirks. You know, when the first time uh, in 1997, I... Uh, was taken by this whole thing that I want to straighten my hair and I don't want this wavy hair anymore. So at that time there was no, uh, you know, straightening or anything of that sort. And uh, there was this one beauty parlor uh, in Bandra where I uh, worked at that time as an assistant director. And I used to go for my beauty services uh, for the normal waxing and the threadings and stuff out there. And I asked her, uh, like, you know, uh, is there anything that can be done uh, besides blow drying every time where the hair can remain straight for a longer period of time? And she goes uh, that, uh, yeah, there is, you know, something that's come, but uh, it is uh, it is a little funny thing because uh, you need to combine that by applying that lotion and leaving it for about five six hours and then with a normal iron we will iron your hair i said what is yes you know with a normal home iron uh, we've got two three irons out in the parlor now and then your hair needs to be ironed with that iron and we'll make you lie down on the table with your head down and uh, then uh, you know the girl will iron your hair I said are you serious he said yes we, we are serious and I said no jack man nobody irons their hair like that I'm sure the solution can do something he said no no you will have to do it that way I took about three weeks to contemplate on this. And I said, hmm, iron. I do not know what is going to happen to my hair if they iron my hair. And what if my hair burns out? What if my hair, you know, sticks out in uh, reverse and becomes more wavy and more ugly? And gosh, what do I need to do? Would I need to go back to my that boy cut? And yes, I had rebelliously grown my hair after my eighth standard by then. So I had a little longer hair and I was like, no, 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 I can't do this to myself. And then every time that I would open up, uh, you know, some magazine and uh, see this lovely straight flowing hair and I would say, no, I really so want this not to fit in anywhere because I want to look at myself and have this nice flowy, lovely straight hair and not have this messy hair, not have to put these four or five pins in my hair, not have to tie it up you know just so that uh, you have a good hair day 
and i was like okay okay kind of convincing myself to uh, you know talking myself out of it three weeks three and a half weeks down and it was around my birthday and i said no 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 i have to do this i want to do this i so want to give this to myself and so i went about and i gifted uh, this straight head look to myself and i did not expect anything and it was not just about not expecting but what took over and what gave me the courage was okay if i try this and it remotely even stays for 3 weeks 1 month 2 months i'll be so happy with it to look at myself and then it's fine come what may it's all right and if it goes worse it's okay i'll cut my hair short i'll go into this trendy bob i'll go back to what i did in school time and uh, i will still look good and uh, i said okay so that's great i would rather have the courage and step out of my comfort zone and do something that truly gave me joy at that point in time and uh, go right ahead with it rather than cringing and telling myself that i never tried and it could have worked most of the time most of the time we talk ourselves out of this courage because we fear failure we are not equipped with failure we are not taught failure in school we are not taught failure as kids all suicides and depressions and so many things going on that is coming out of the carpet nowadays is because of the guilt and shame of failure we do not allow people to come out and be 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 you know seen as vulnerable or be seen in their low spots because we judge we judge them as weak we judge them as failures we judge them as losers and so on and so forth we are we are so equipped to run someone down but to give an appreciation to uh, to give a, a a good feedback to give a positive outlook to something we will think 10 times oh he'll just have ego if i say this oh he will think of this if i say that oh she will think i'm just like you know getting up her back side if i'm going to do that no we have so many reasons not to do the good to press that little button and send a fake forward or a nasty hate message we don't even blink an eyelid but to forward a good message to forward a positive message we just forward it oh she uh, she may not like it she may think i'm got quack in the head of sending these spiritual and you know happy positive messages to her or him and we do not send it we judge people even what they expect to get from us because we want to be the perfectionist we want to send them the perfect thing at the perfect time so we want to stop sending things just for the joy of it we want to stop sending and doing things just for the sake of our heart wanting to do it for people the catch is to burst the bubble of perfectionism which actually is over perfectionism which is like a termite that eats into us that kills us until we are dusted in that powder we are completely crumbled into that heap and we do not know that we were this one full whole thing at one point in time because we have constantly struggled and struggled to be in this framework for other people to be this perfect picture to be this perfect face I want to do something because it makes me happy. I want to look good because it makes me happy. That's absolutely fine. And that's absolutely okay. So many a times so many people say, "Oh my god, your hair is so perfect all the time." And like, you know, I say, "No, it is like internally, no it is not perfect. I make it perfect. I want it to be perfect and I feel good about it." 
I feel good that even though I do not straighten my hair so much nowadays, I do iron them when I go out or when I feel good about it. It does not come in those drastic waves. Yes, there are some waves. Um, they are there. But uh, no. I want it to be perfect because I feel good about that. But if I have to be perfect in that sense, then I'm perfect even with this. I have worked through a lot with my God's grace to bust a lot of sh crap out of my life. It's not all been good and it never would be with anyone, anyone. And each and every one would be a bag full of stories. We all are this tons and tons bag full of stories of imperfectionism. And we have to let out those stories. We have to let out those stories so that people can know that being vulnerable is not weak, but being vulnerable is being your true self. I'm joyful and I'm funny and I have this laughter and I have this joyful interaction even with my students in our workshops. Our spiritual workshops and meditations are not morose and serious where you are sitting in, uh, you know, some arbit uh, so-called perfectionism uh, posture and uh, things. No, it is not. It is about being comfortable in your skin. It is about being comfortable with what is imperfect and then trying to, you know, work on it of how better can it be even if it is not on the perfect dotted line. And I have been working and working on my own self all through these years and sharing those gifts. There are criticisms, there is backbiting, and there is a whole lot of things that's in the bandwagon. That's not to be missed. It's all a part and parcel. But... When I'm perfectly happy in my skin, when I'm perfectly honest with who I am, when I'm perfectly in tune, in alignment of who I am, then nothing matters. Nothing matters and nothing will matter of what others are talking about me, what others are talking about my thoughts, words or actions or putting it out there. There are so many times I've heard from the closest people where words come around. Be it some childhood friends, be it, you know, school or, uh, you know, player associates or just friends in life where things are said. And things will be said. We are all in a zoo with different kind of animals all around us. But I have to be comfortable in my cage. I have to draw my boundaries that nobody comes into my cage and I do not jump into the lion's cage. And I can do that. I can have that inner stability. I can release my fears. I can release my doubts, my disbeliefs, my myths. Only and only when I can embrace what is not so good in me. Only when I can embrace what is unserving in any way to me, to my growth, and therefore and thereby to everyone around me. I still get, you know, insights and messages from my rickshaw chacha who I call upon. I so many times get uh, a certain learning from my, uh, you know, God sent uh, house manager, house help, my, you know, all in one person, Chotu Vishal at home. There's so many times that everything around me teaches me something, teaches me to not just be out of the box, but to throw the box away. To throw the box away in which people have kept me. And that is what we need to do. Throw the box of dogmatic beliefs. Throw the box of dogmatic myths. And just bust them. 
just burst these balloons and let them go let them go so that you can be in this perfected art of embracing your imperfections so it's about 2:15 am right now and in love and grace up there i close this imperfect video with so many random random stutters and blunders and whatever fully truly wish and send this love and healing to all the parents grandparents elders especially so that they can get out of any of these belief systems that they may have held and allow the nurturing and the blossoming of the new generation to learn about things that they never learned to learn about our most perfect attribute of humanity which is imperfection failure and rising above it all in all our courage in all our vulnerability in all our strength in all our weakness and through it all emerge this phoenix that rises out of dust that shines and rises high higher and higher as time goes by so in this perfect timing and divine timing we take home this message that i am thankful to you for your time of listening to this message and all and any of my messages that you have listened to of sparing your time to coming to my post and clicking it of sparing your time to go through something that i may have shared of sparing your time to listen to all my clients to all my students to everyone who have come in their divine perfect time to face their imperfections and with me with my imperfections allowing divinity to flow through me and to work on me every day so that i only work towards pleasing the creator and being as good as good perfect for him to do everything not to please the creation but only and only to please this creator so to please him i have released all the dogma that surrounded me all the nonsense that i was breeding myself with and with that i close this wonderful wonderful time that i've had talking into my phone camera for you all so thank you love you all bless you all be vulnerable be imperfect and know that's a perfect human being in love and light and in super duper god speed